This super awesome and cheap switch has 24 two and a half gig ethernet ports, eight 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. And I am so upset just because it is so hard to buy one of these things. But hold on, let, let's back up. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the TP-Link TL-SH1832. And this switch is a two and a half gig ethernet switch with 10 gigabit uplinks. And I got it for well under $600. In fact, one of them, uh, if I do end up getting it, is gonna be well under $500. And that makes this on a per port basis, the cheapest two and a half gig ethernet switch you can get with a giant asterisk there. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the switch. We're also gonna look at the performance power consumption. And then I'm gonna tell you why this thing makes me so upset. Now, if you're sitting around and you're on Amazon or something like that, and you put TP-Link TLSH1832, you're not gonna find the switch right now. I just did it. And as of the time I'm recording this video, you cannot do it. But at the same time, I, I have one right here. And the way this came about is that we've been working at STH on this giant kind of low power, low cost, two and a half gig ethernet roundup. So we have the switch roundup. We have like 14 plus different different models. And while I was doing that, we actually had a reader comment that sent in and said, hey, you know, you can go buy this switch and uh, it's it's available in China and it is dirt cheap and they're super popular. There, there was, of course, one, one catch and that was that it was super hard to go get. So I, of course, ordered two switches and this is the first one that arrived. And I was so excited once we actually started testing it. Brian was testing it. He was showing me the numbers out of it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. We got to go do a video on this one. So if you're looking for a 99-ish dollar switch or something like that, we are going to have the other video that will be coming as soon as we finish testing all these units. We have so many of them that it's just taking a while. And frankly, this thing came in and has delayed that project a little bit because we decided to prioritize this because I think this is so cool. A quick thank you to our STH YouTube members who helped us buy this unit. If you want to support us, you can always join down below. So let's get to the hardware and let's talk about what the heck this switch even is. So looking at the front of the switch, you're gonna see a lot of really common switch features. First off, we have a total of 24 RJ45 ports. Of these ports, they run at two and a half gig ethernet or one gigabit ethernet speeds. We did test these out. We also tested them for PoE, which we'll show you in a bit. Now there are a lot of like eight port two and a half gig ethernet switches out there that are like 200 bucks or more by themselves. So a 24 port switch being in the four, 500, $600 range actually doesn't even seem too far off, but this thing has those 10 gigabit ethernet ports, which is absolutely crazy. One thing that I'm not personally crazy of, but I know a lot of people do prefer this way. I think it's like kind of a, you like one or the other is just that all of the LEDs for, you know, the status of the different ports are all off to the side. Some people like this because all, you know, you don't have like the LED lights and have to look at them around cables. I like them directly on the cable so you know if something very easily is live or not. And uh, so this is just my personal opinion, but I know a lot of people have other opinions there. But you gotta do one or the other. I think what TP-Link did here totally makes sense. Now you'll see that this is a one rack unit switch. We do get rack mount ears with this. I think we also got feet for it. So if you just wanna use a desktop unit, you can do that. You'll see on both sides of this that we have vents, but you don't see any fans. There's no fans on the back either. There's no fans anywhere in this chassis. This is a silent unit. That's insane. Looking at the back of the unit, you have a power input and then you have a grounding port, but that's basically it. Underneath the switch, you get a little TP-Link label. It doesn't really have that much information and uh, I don't see any like FCC markings or anything like that. So you probably can't really run this in the US. You also don't have things like UL markings and all those types of things that would make a switch like this really deployable in a small medium business or enterprise or anything like that. But there are of course people that just want the cheapest thing that you possibly can get and that's pretty much this. Okay, looking inside the unit, you'll see that we have a power supply that's built in. This is not a dual power supply unit. There's no redundancy. You also cannot hot swap this, but again, this is a cheap switch. So that's pretty much what we would expect at this price point. Only really like Microtik is probably the only vendor that really does those features like having redundant power supplies in this kind of segment. So I wouldn't necessarily expect TP-Link to do that here. That power supply is wired to the main switch PCB. And you'll see that we have a bunch of things like real techniques. One other kind of interesting thing just is that on the SFP plus ports, you'll see that there are little thermal pads, which I thought was, uh, you know, kind of interesting thing just as a design, especially since this is fanless. There's a large heatsink for the switch ASIC, which I thought is also kind of cool. So what is the switch missing? Uh, the obvious one is it's missing a management processor. This is an unmanaged switch. 
And that I think is good and bad because on one hand, I think a lot of folks, especially on this port density of Switch will want something that you can actually go manage and do things like VLANs and even just basic things like that. On the flip side, it also means that you don't really have that kind of like high-end firmware and processor running in this thing. It's pretty much just a Switch chip. It also makes it super easy to configure because you just power it up and you start plugging things in. Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption and noise of this switch. The first thing that you'll probably notice at this point is that I have this switch plugged in, so you can see that the power cable's on. I also just have a uh, you know a dummy Ethernet cable, so you can see on the status lights that this thing's actually on and working. It is definitely a little bit warm, but something that you won't hear is any noise. There are no fans in this entire switch, which means that it's dead quiet. The flip side of not having fans is the fact that this setup right here is using just about 18 watts. So I'm going to show you a couple shots real quick. The first one is just the switch sitting at idle and it's about 16.9 watts. We then just connected a two and a half gig ethernet cable to it. So this thing's actually linking up. And uh, what you'll see there is that we got about 0.4 watts, so about 17.3 watts. And then uh, we took that out and we added a SFP plus to 10 G base T adapter because those things tend to run hot immediately when you put them in. And we got about 1.7 watts of additional power consumption. And that's completely at idle. So pushing this switch, we actually just took like a whole bunch of, you know, these two and a half gig ethernet boxes, put those there, put some SFPs in there. And we just kind of saw like how much power we could pull on the system. You know, we definitely saw that the switch hit over 40 watts pretty easily and then over 45 watts under load. So I'm sure that you could push this thing to 50 watts. So one of the challenges is that 45 to 50 watts or 40 to 50 watts in a chassis like this that's passively cooled is actually quite a bit. Most of the time when we see systems that are, you know, this this form factor and you see something like, you know, 35, 40 watts, they're definitely not, you know, passively cooled. They usually have fans. So I do think that somebody is going to Noctua mod this and put a quiet fan in there. In fact, I wish that they actually were there because although this is silent, on the other hand, if you do go and push the thing, you are probably gonna get a really, really hot switch. Although we didn't run into any issues with it. I just kind of feel like you probably will at some point. Now let's talk about performance for a second. I thought that when we got the switch that it was gonna be just absolutely terrible and there's gonna be like a crazy blocking switch and like, you know, we get maybe half of the throughput that we'd expect on all the ports or something like that. Uh, and, and frankly, we didn't. We got pretty darn close to the advertised speeds. Enough to say that like, you know, if you're looking for something better than a one gig switch, I would say this is definitely it. Now we've talked about all of the hardware and in fact it's an unmanaged switch, there's no fans, power consumption, all that kind of stuff. What we haven't talked about yet is we haven't talked about how the heck to even get one of these because it's it's not easy. There are two ways that I found that I've been able to order these switches. One way is I went to the original Taobao link and on that you were able to go find and you know exchange rates change over time and all that kind of stuff. But these switches are sold if you look around for under $400, usually like 390, but just around that $400 range, right? But the problem of course was that the Taobao sellers that sell it for under $400 only ship domestically within China. So your option is to go to a freight forwarding company. And by the time I got all of the freight forwarding stuff, if I wanted to do it quickly, the quick shipping, by the way, I got quoted that to do like 10 to 15 day shipping, overnight air shipping would have been like $135. Slow shipping is 30 plus days, which is why the second one of these is not here. We normally do these switch reviews and we always have two switches. Uh, in this case, uh, we only have one. Now the slower mode shipping, I think we got quoted somewhere in like the 35 to $45 range. So it, depending on which seller you get it from and all that kind of stuff, you're probably gonna end up spending about $435 kind of at the low end to maybe up to about $500 to ship. And also if you get the overnight two week shipping, I don't know how that works again, then you're probably talking about, you know, maybe $540 or so. The other option, however, is that I did find this on AliExpress. The first vendor that I found it on, they were like $750 for this thing, which I thought was absolutely crazy because like, I didn't want to pay $750 for something that I knew only cost like $400, right? And so I kind of looked around a little bit more on AliExpress and I did find one seller that was selling these things for, I think it was like $579. 
And they have free shipping via AliExpress, which takes usually about three or so weeks to get there. So that's actually not such a bad option. And then the other thing you can do is you can do what we did and spend for DHL shipping, which it actually got here like much faster than like when we get these, these like little fanless two and a half gig ethernet boxes, this actually came a lot faster than that. But at the same time, you know, we spent I think like $600 for it. So your range I would say is realistically, I think most people are gonna spend maybe about $580 on the top end and then they're gonna spend somewhere in that maybe $450 on the low end for something like this, depending on how easy you want that transaction to be. So you're probably sitting there wondering a $450 to $600 switch, how is this guy saying that this could be the cheapest two and a half gig ethernet switch? Let's break that down really easily. First off, it has eight SFP plus ports. If the cheapest eight SFP plus port switch is a TP-Link unit that we reviewed previously. We'll link that video below, but that thing was like $166. So if you take these ports over here and you say, okay, well, $166 is that eight port 10 gig switch that's over here. Well, that, uh, that kind of reduces our total purchase price and we can look at the two and a half gig switch based on that. So taking that $166, deducting it from our $579 gives us a $413 price for the 24 port two and a half gig ethernet portion of the switch. That effectively is only $17 per two and a half gig ethernet port, which means if you're looking at this, like it was a say five port two and a half gig ethernet and your know, price per port there at $17, that would be like an $86 five port switch, which is pretty darn hard to find these days, but that's going the easy mode AliExpress version. If you were to go through all the pain to go through the Taobao shipping and freight forwarding and all that whole thing, well, then you would be at much lower dollars per port. We're using $460 here, you subtract $166 for our SFP plus ports, and you're at $294 for all the two and a half gig ethernet ports. That gives you a per port cost of only $12. That would make a five port switch at the same dollar per port cost as this, like something like a $61 switch. But I think that there's a little bit more than that to this switch, right? Because if you have those little like five port, eight port switches, well now you have to use one of those ports for an uplink to another switch. And if you don't have 10 gig on it, well then, you know, how are you gonna uplink it? And all of those kind of things that you have to go through. And so when you look at it from a perspective of the fact that you get a bigger switch, so you're wasting less, what less uplink ports and you have a smaller radix and all that kind of stuff. Well, this actually starts to look pretty darn good. Frankly, with all the 10 gig ethernet ports and the two and a half gig ethernet ports, I think for like a home lab, for a lot of folks in their houses and stuff like this, this kind of switch is actually like the absolute perfect option. So that brings us to our key lessons learned. Now, the first thing I know a lot of folks are going to say is like, hey, uh, this doesn't have the regulatory markings that you need. Yes, that's true. But on the other hand, a lot of folks are gonna say, hey, um, you know, this is a switch. Is there, is there anything weird going on? Now, this is a sample size of one. We haven't even gotten our second switch, which was really one that was bought on Taobao domestically in China and then shipped. But this switch, we used Wireshark and, uh, and and the team didn't find anything, at least in the first couple hours that we were just kind of looking. So is it possible that these things come with compromised firmware? Yes but we didn't see it at least in this unit. But the thing that makes my blood boil on a switch like this is number one, why can't TP-Link sell something like this in the US? Why is it only a domestic China switch? Why do we have to pay so much for two and a half gig ethernet devices? Heck, I'll take one that's not managed if I can get it for a lower cost just to have that as an option. Oh. And by the way, if somebody does decide to go and make one of these at a reasonable price for the US market, something I would also really like is if this had power over ethernet. We did test this switch to see if there was PoE. And unfortunately the ports didn't have PoE. When you look inside, it doesn't have PoE circuitry. So I think it makes sense that like this is not a PoE switch. So if somebody out there works for a switch manufacturer like Microtik, Netgear, something like that, get me a sub, you know, $600 or $500 unmanaged switch just like this, literally copy this entire thing in the inside. And I will be very, very happy as an unmanaged switch for a couple extra bucks. I'm happy to go pay for some PoE in here because this would be absolutely awesome if we had like a PoE plus plus switch or something like that that can power APs and have two and a half gig backhauls with 10 gig as well. I want it, so somebody make it for me already. At the end of the day, a 24 port, two and a half gig ethernet, eight port SFP plus fanless switch that's unmanaged for like under $500 is absolutely crazy. Even under $600 is an awesome deal compared to all the other two and a half gig ethernet switch gear that's on the market. But the thing that gets me is like TP-Link, 
why can't you bring this switch to the US market at around the same price? Why can't I get something like this? If you want a switch that's like this at a reasonable price, maybe put it in the comments and maybe somebody will say like, hey, there's a market for it and we should go build something like this. Now, of course, I know not everybody is gonna be able to spend $450, $600, whatever on a switch like this. So we do have a two and a half gig ethernet switch series that we've shown off a little bit. We have a ton of units, I think like 14 plus units now that we have and we're gonna be doing as a roundup both on the STH main site as well as on YouTube. So if you did like this video and you wanna know when we come out with more two and a half gig ethernet content, well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.